Hey, what's cracking? This is the Arturia Micro Brute. All right, let's do this. The Arturia Microbrute is a small and portable analog monosynth. Released eight years ago, the Microbrute is discontinued but still available for around 220 bucks on the used market. Its simple interface combined with its small patch bay and intuitive controls make it a straightforward yet surprisingly deep synth. With an easy to understand layout, it's a great learning tool for someone just starting out with subtractive synthesis, yet its deeper and more novel controls, like the brute factor and metalizer, allow it to make more unique sounds than you would initially expect. It's a great portable performance tool due to its inclusion of pitch and mod wheels and a 25 key mini keybed. Taking design cues from vintage monosynths like the SH-101, it's a great, familiar, yet new and interesting monosynth that's great for beginners and experienced musicians alike. And from a bang for buck standpoint, it's hard to beat competing with the likes of the Behringer Crave and the IK Uno synth. It's an affordable yet relatively feature rich synth that's dirt cheap and easy to come by. Wow, that was a lot. This is not that complicated, but uh, I guess I had to say a lot about it. All right, so whatever you gathered from that, that's probably a good overview of what this guy does. You got little 25 key mini key key bed. You got your pitch and mod wheels for performance stuff. You got a little patch bay up here. It only has eight patch points, which is kind of cute. Having now owned a Juno, this very much reminds me of that synthesizer. It's like, I, you know, using this, I feel right at home, especially, you know, obviously the sliders make it look like a Juno, but I think even in the oscillator section where you can blend different oscillator wave shapes, that's a very like, you know, SH-101 Juno kind of deal. I really like that. It's really cool. It has several different types of filters. It has a high pass, band pass, and low pass, which is cool. It's a two pole filter, which I'm not a huge fan of. I'm more of a four pole guy. I'm really just not a fan of bright filters. I like, you know, really dark filters where you can crank up the resonance and get like a nice fat, juicy tone. But you know, it's cool. Every synth has its own flavor and this one's flavor is decently bright. You can also do a key tracking amount, which is really nice for doing like cool bass and lead lines that you wanna make a little more interesting. It's got octave controls for the key bed, so you can use this for like bass or lead or whatever you wanna do. What I like is the multiple mod wheel uh, destinations. You can trigger the LFO or the cutoff control for the filter with the mod wheel, which is super cool. And that doesn't seem like a huge deal, but then when you realize you have a patch bay where you can assign the LFO to anything, that's pretty cool. But you got a glide control for doing cool bases and leads. You have an LFO that can be three different wave shapes, a triangle, saw, or square. You can turn off the sync of the LFO or set it to sync with the sequencer, which is dope. You have an envelope amount for the VCA and you can set it to either use the one envelope you have here or you can just set it to the gate of like whatever you're playing, which is like exactly the same as a Juno where you have one envelope and you can either use it for both of VCA and the filter, 
or uh, you can just trigger the VCA with the gate, which kind of gets around having a second envelope. It makes it a little bit easier. You have a sequencer, which is super dope and different modes. You can set the tempo, you can set different patterns, super sick. Obviously you have a master volume control up here. You got the two pole filter with the three different modes. You have cutoff and resonance controls and a brute factor, which I'm pretty sure is just like a filter overdrive. It honestly sounds to me pretty close to like a Moog overdrive where you can really crank it up and get like just absolutely nasty overtones with it. And then you have an envelope amount to trigger the filter with the uh, envelope that you get here. And then you have keyboard tracking, like I said, which is all the way from zero to 200% which I think is kind of funny. And then in the oscillator section, you just have one voice, but you can blend in different oscillators. So you get a saw, a square, and a triangle. And that kind of seems pretty basic, but then you realize each one has its own little wave shaping deal, which is really cool. So you get the ultra saw with the saw, you get the pulse width with the square wave, and then you get what's really interesting to me, uh, the metalizer for the triangle. It's a really weird thing that I've not seen on any other synthesizer. I haven't played with many of the other brutes. The only other two brutes that I've owned are the drum brute and the drum brute impact. So uh, I'm not familiar with the metalizer control, but uh, more experienced Arturia users might be. And then you also get a an overtone control for adding either a sub or a fifth, which is really interesting. So like, it looks really simple and it, it kind of is, but you get a lot more control than it initially looks like. You know, there are a lot of interesting controls that aren't on a lot of other synthesizers. I do really like the inclusion of like the little tiny mod matrix. I think that's really awesome. It just adds, you know, so much deeper control like without that I don't know it just wouldn't be a deep synthesizer at all but with this it, it just adds so much more ability to this synthesizer because you can use the LFO uh, patch point is the clutch thing for me because that lets you trigger like anything with the mod wheel you can trigger like pulse width or cutoff or pitch modulation or whatever you want to do. It's super sick. And then what I like is that you can uh, trigger the saw and sub modifiers with the two CV outs, which is really cool. So you can trigger those with either the envelope or the LFO, which is really dope. For that bass patch that I had in the intro, I just had the LFO going to the uh, pulse width of the square wave to get kind of that nice like coarsey wavy effect that's super nice to listen to. Uh, and I guess if we want to take a look at the back of this, you can see we got power, we got USB, we got a MIDI in, no MIDI out, which I think is interesting, especially because it's a little, you know, compact keyboard, you would think maybe you would want a MIDI out on this, although I guess if you're using USB, it's not a big deal. You got input and an input level, so I'm assuming you can use this as kind of like a, a an effect. You have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. That's something to note. It does not have a quarter inch headphone jack. It has a quarter inch line out, and then it has some CV pitch out, gate out, and gate in controls, which is super cool for attaching it to other modular stuff, other synthesizers, whatever you need to do. And then you also have pitch controls over here. So overall, lots of stuff on this guy. Pretty impressive in such a small little synth package. It is mostly made of plastic, but that's not a big deal because it's pretty high quality plastic. It doesn't feel bad to use. The pots feel really good. The knobs feel really nice. I like that they're rubber, so they're a little grippy. You know, you're not gonna lose grip of a knob. Uh, same thing with the pitch and mod wheel, that's really cool. Yeah, overall, just like, you know, really good build quality, really good sound, lots of features for the price and for how simple it looks and feels to use. It's very intuitive. If you have a sound in your head, you can make it really, really quickly. That's another thing that I think it takes from like the SH-101 and the Junos is that it is so dead simple and there is no patch memory. So like you boot it up, it's already on the last sound that you made before you shut it down. 
and you can, you know, get right to whatever sound you want to make. It's really dope. I honestly prefer synths without patch memory because I like making stuff myself. I like, you know, messing with everything and home making my sound to my preference because it's always going to be a little different. You know, even if you make presets yourself, you're always going to want to mess with something to get it to like sit in the mix just right. Or, you know, maybe the envelope isn't, you know, the decay isn't right for this tempo or whatever. So enough of me talking. Let's hear this in a little bit more action than just the intro. The intro song was really two patches on this, one of which was kind of a cool little plucky patch that I made to like throw a freaking 13 second reverb on to make it a really lush, beautiful pad. And then the other one was like a super simple bass patch with that LFO going to the uh, pulse width modulation. No outside help from any other synths, only effects. But yeah, let's get into some more sound demos of this guy and hear how it sounds.
right, so that's my review of the Arturia Micro Brute. Really, really like just genuinely surprised at the level of depth to this guy. Like, okay, it's not crazy. It's only slightly more depth than you would get with something like a Juno. Uh, the controls are pretty dang similar to the Junos, just with the addition of the patch bay, which makes it a bit deeper. You can have more modulation options with the envelope and the LFO. It's not the deepest synth ever. It's easy to understand. The panel layout is super dead simple. It's knob per function. There is no menu diving because there are no menus, which is awesome. I love it. What you see is what you get. There's very little below the surface, which I think is fantastic. That's my preference. It might not be yours. You might like to have more features packed into a tiny little thing, in which case maybe go for something like the micro freak or something. But if you're looking for knob per function stuff, real basic little bass machine or lead machine or whatever, this is it. This is, it's affordable, it's high quality, sounds great. Like I said, personally not a huge fan of the filter, but that's just my personal preference. I like darker filters, you might not. But this is a fantastic option for a first synth, for a an addition to your synth collection. I think it's just really great overall, uh, makes a lot of sense as a synthesizer in their lineup. Don't really know why they discontinued it, it feels like kind of a timeless piece. But yeah, it's a great synthesizer, very affordable. And if you'd like to get your hands on one, you can actually own this one, this exact one right here, by going to metronomemusic.com and checking out this synth in the shop page. If you're in the Tucson area, you can just come into the store and pick it up. Or if you're not, if you're somewhere else around the country, then you can just go to the website, order it, and they will ship it to you. Thank you so much to Metronome Music for letting me borrow this synthesizer to make a video about. Really appreciate you guys. You're awesome. They are really excellent people over there. Uh, they got a great website where you can get lots of awesome music gear, and they're gonna put more synthesizers up soon when I do more videos about them. We got lots of cool stuff coming. We got some Moogs. From them personally, I bought a Juno and a Moog Little Fatty, so there are gonna be videos on those soon as well. But yeah, overall, just fantastic people. Great place to buy uh, used synths or used gear in general that's in great condition, well taken care of. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Metronome Music, and I will see you in the next synth review. Until then, Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see ya. Peace.